Amen. We give the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
to be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belonged unto God. Also unto the Lord, belonging in mercy, for the Lord is everyone according to his word. This is the word of the Lord. We come to God his richest blessing when we say, Glory to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now shall it be. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. As I said earlier on, we were blessed of the word. You may be seated. We were blessed this morning in this morning service. I I I only would hope that more fathers would be here today to hear these words. Amen. Because they are a uh, good help to us as fathers and as potential fathers, as men all together. And today, apart from those men that are on the outside doing, uh, in taking part in the other activities, I hope and trust that we that are here today will listen and will get something from the Word of God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I gather I was made to understand that there is a presentation to be made here to our pastor by Sister Lana. Amen. Sister Lana. Will you come? Bless the name of the Lord. Somebody get pastor here. There is a presentation to be made. Amen. Sister Lyons. Come on, give it up. Now we can ask them. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Come, sister, now. Here is a person. 
Education, another one by Sister Gian. Oh, 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 oh,
there's power in the name. There's power. Yeah. Amen. 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 
healed man. I must have prayed still about that. We need men in our churches. A church without men is a church that is dying. I'm sorry. A church in man. And at least we need more man. Yes. Hello? Not man to man. Communities need man. Yes. The schools need men. The country need men. And all these institutions will fail without the influence of a man. And so it is my duty today to bring to the attention that believe it or not, we seem, however, to be living in a manless society. We see it in fatherlessness, the breakdown in families. When we look at our churches, I am particularly pleased, however, that there was once in our organization when you couldn't find men to stand up to leadership. Yes. You, you, one time I remember yes. even overseeing convention, youth convention, and we couldn't hardly find men to stand and speak. One year we were asked, look here, I use one one. But the reality was that what we were looking for, there was a deficit. I am particularly pleased now that we have men who have lifted the bar. Yes. But we still need more. Yes. When we look at our nation, Pastor Ben, there is still an absence of men where we need them. And Matthew, I have nothing about women. No meaning in a leadership. There are some people who believe otherwise. I'm not one of them. And I have to be convinced otherwise by God. Because God help us if it wasn't for some women leadership. Yes. I can tell you I am a product yes. of a female pastor. Amen. 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 That is petty for me. Yes. What we want are men to come. Yes. yes. Amen. When we look at even our country and some very key leadership positions, men are absent. Yes. And when you look at those who are positioned even in line in terms of succession, we recognize that the men are a little down the back. But I want you to understand that God is looking for kingdom men. Yes. Kingdom men. Not just a man, but a kingdom man. I said to you earlier that there's a difference between man and male. Yeah. Difference between gender and sex. Yeah. Male is an organism that produces sperm. And once you're producing sperm, you're a male. Yes. But who is a man? First Kings 2, verse 2 says, Show yourself a man. Yes. Show means to establish. Yes. He was a male before. Yes. But he was now to establish and demonstrate the attitudes yes. of the foundation and creation. God. He was now about to take the throne of becoming a king that was king. It is hard to be a man. A society pressures men to be a man. Very hard. There is no pressure to be a male. You are born male. But it is hard to be a man. 
You hear me? Even in, 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 in everywhere you go, act like a man. Yes. Talk like a man. Yes. Yeah, be a man. Yes. <laughs> but even in church, the pressure to be a man is very pressuring yes. to be a man. But God is still calling us to be men, yeah. kingdom men. Amen. What it means to be a kingdom man is to have dominion and rulership. Yes. It is having heavenly instruction yes. for implementation on earth. Yes. If you are not getting divine revelation from heaven yes. and implementing that on earth, you are not a command. And so the concept of a kingdom man is this. When God creates in chapter 1 of Genesis, and God said, this word God here means Elohim. It means the creative power. And so when God creates man, Adam, he said the Lord God, which meant Yahweh, which is the self-revealing God, who is the governor. Therefore, a kingdom man is God of power that allows and creates a being that is able to self-reveal through God as a governor. Yeah. I said a whole other number jump right here. But all I'm saying, a man was created to lead and to rule, not to be a boss. Male who lives his life, I'm so a man is a, a male. Yeah, we produce sperm there, we yeah. So a man is a male who lives his life under the rulership of God yes. and executes leadership over that which God has set him. Simple. Now you can't exercise leadership over what God has put you in charge of without taking instructions from God. Yes. You are the head of the wife as God is your head. Yes. Yes. And so it is God to you down the line. Yes. And therefore if God is absent from the equation, we are disappear. Yes. A kingdom man is a male who has learned to live his life under the lordship of Christ. The role of man, however, is in trouble. It is hard to be a man. Many men will say, well, ladies, I want you to understand that as you put pressure on a man, that it is hard to be a man. It's hard as they Everything beating up anybody today. It is hard to be a man. Because there is an absence of man already. Understand that even your husband or your boyfriend or the man in your life, if you check many, their male figure, role model, is missing. And so if they were not under any Lordship from a man. How then can they grasp being Lord over now a family? They now have to relearn what they have not learned. Yeah. Yeah. I say, if you have a good father, you are going to adopt good traits. Yes. Because we learn via assimilation from our environment. Yeah. But if there's an absence of a father, you are going to learn otherwise, yes. which is going to take more time. Because a child growing up with a good father from a small age starts to assimilate the good characteristics and they leave them. But some of who don't have one, they're going to have to learn. And so it is in marriage some people learn how to communicate. It is in marriage some people learn how to be open, how to love. People have to go to counseling to understand these things because there's an absence of a man. 
understand that we need an elder man to guide the younger. I want to say to the young men in, in this church and those hearing me that we must take instruction and knowledge from our elders. Amen. The challenges of an 18 year old are different from a 70 year old. Yes. But the 70 year old has been 18. Yes. And some of the same challenges that we're facing as an 18, believe it or not, as holy as Ladies, you have a mom sitting you down and telling you what to do. But we are the grandpas. It is hard to be a man. Where are those? That, that, that's why many fail. They become abusive and turn away from women. Our relationships are broken because there are no man to say, no son, don't do it that way, do it this way. There's no man to say, I will discipline you concerning this. And so they live their lives, many not knowing when it is they really are wrong, and how to deal with the role of correction. And so many live their life not feeling wanted because they don't think daddy, daddy was not there, daddy didn't need me. As I said in first service, there are some intrinsic values that only a man can communicate to his child. I said to first service that I used to say my mother who father me. But I stopped. Because a mother cannot be a father. As best as a mother will try, cannot. There's a difference when a dad takes his son outside and plays football. Or when he takes his son to the park and run up and down all over the place. There's a difference when a dad takes a daughter and kisses the daughter and says, I love you. Because she now understands the difference between a genuine love that when I'm outside, tell them that I love you. Yes. There are certain things that only a dad can impart to their child. Yes. And therefore we hear, be a man. Men feel threatened by women. Sure. Believe it or not, there are men who feel threatened by women. One of the reasons that women are grown up in homes where there's no father or he was silent or hardly there. That's one of the reasons. So women have learned to desire what was not. So you then treat a man like he is a woman in a suit. You expect him to love you like a woman loves. Look at the baby girls. We give them dolls. They are already practicing motherhood. But what do we give the boys? Bones. And so from the onset, we teach the girls to be nurturers, loving. But we teach the males to be rough. Five of them shoot all but they don't see. <laughs> we have to understand that we have to treat our children. Women, we are different. I know that. But men are also different. And therefore, there are few things that when you look at women, they, 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 are, they are intellectually savvy. They know what they want. They know what to get there. They do what they need to get where they want. Women are go get us. A woman will, they said, if you give a woman food, they give you a meal. You give them a house, they give you a home. But I can tell you, without a house, you can't give me a home. 
seed and then give you a child. But we know the seed. And therefore you have to work together. Understand that it's a partnership. And so women, I'm inviting you to understand that the men in your life sometimes they feel a little bit threatened. As some of you are really uh, independent, you know, like, like independent. Uh, 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 uh. Show your hands up with me. Yeah. And I'm a survivor. I'm going to get there. Ain't going to stop. Keep on surviving. I'm not a... Hello. So we know you're independent. We know you are a go getter. We know. Hey, you can do it. But I want to say to some of the women, stop making your house a church. Mm. My God. Amen. Why am I facing from the rock? Because some of them understand that the needs of men are different from women. Yes. I remember telling this church, Concerning the concept of fasting, and this is a very, uh, it, it is a concept that is proliferated in many churches. And I was shocked at the view of one person. I remember saying to the church that, you see, if your relationship mash up, you can't come with me, Pastor. That's what never happened. And so don't let church mash up your relationship. So church would have had like 10 fireside yeah, and you say that a bubble. Yeah, be a and if your husband feel like say, mm -hmm. you better administer to your husband before you come on here. Because when you go jump in at this, yes. and when you go home, <laughs> you can't jump, come back to pastor. <laughs> and then we, we have to be careful because the church, yes. as an institution, have created monstrous relationships. Right. We have messed up many. Yes. And you must administer to your family first. first it is God. First your family yes. and then the church. church. So all of you ladies, they say you're about fasting. Yes. You are fast. Yes. Your husband can't touch you. Yes. Paul tells you that unless there is mutual agreement, yes. and I challenge anybody to challenge you, unless there is mutual agreement, so your husband not agree, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot you can't and tell me say you are fast. I'm talking about kingdom men. Yes. And some of the problems we're having, why men are missing from the kingdom, is because of some False theologies God. that they believe that if I come to church, I can't do this. God. I can't do that. Right. As a church, we need to open up and let men know that you can be a man and be a Christian man right. and be a kingdom man. Right. 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 This is not particular topic that I'm touching is taboo in churches. Yes. Right. People true. don't feel like you can talk about sex in church. Right. Yeah. But one of the greatest needs of men is sex. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you don't talk about it and understand it as a woman, yeah. your relationship is going to suffer. Yes. And then the church is going to be affected. Yeah. Because what we are going to have is thirsty men in church. Yes. 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 Amen. Absent from church. And then they become absent. Yes. And we will have miserable men. Yes. Hello. And so, understand, ladies, that as intellectual as you are, you may have a man that can't reason on your level. So don't be down, man. 
Dumb it down. Break it down. Yes. Your husband might be the farmer and you might be the doctor. So what? So what? If no food no grow, you can't eat. You can't eat. You can't eat. You can't eat. It is a teamwork. That makes a dreamer. Understand that not only do man feel threatened by a woman, but what I recognize is men have lost their purpose. Men have lost their identity, and so they try to emulate and imitate other men who are not worthy of imitation. Everybody is wearing a jersey with somebody else's name on the back. God forbid, make a jersey with your name and we are. Everybody wants to wear Kobe. Number for him. Everybody wants to be messy. Everybody wants to be Rolandinia. Accept that you don't know everything. 
You don't know everything. And neither do you have a solution to everything. But as you seek help, you must also seek help from the right people. The right men. Because some men that you seek help from don't have the right solution. You can't be having, let me use an, an example. I cannot be a man that is having relational issues and I'm seeking help from a man who is divorced three times. I don't have the solution. No. I must look for somebody who have a stable thing going. You have to be careful who you seek help from. Not only that, but personal knowledge. Yes. I want to pause on this to say, men, personal knowledge. Yes. Read. Yes. Google. 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 Yeah. Surf the web. Yeah. Read newspaper. It pees me as a man when I see men sitting down and not doing something. Go to a skill place, get a skill. Learn a new skill. Pursue knowledge, men, because women are constant pursuers of knowledge. And so what you find now are very highly educated women. I have a friend that I talk to. She is clear that she will never date a man below her intellectual standard. Women are looking for kingdom men, and men, we have to step up. Don't sit in church and think that because you are a Christian, that you are going to find yourself with the, the most eloquent and the most spiritual and the most beautiful out of the pot. Some of us need to step up, man. Pursue knowledge. Understand men that here, there is a cultural problem and a crisis. Isaiah 3 verse 12 says, As for my people, the children are their oppressors and women rule over them. They who lead the cause, they cause them to err and to destroy the way of my God. The word is chaotic because men are absent in church. They are absent in their families. I remember telling you before that this is like a cricket match. Two teams are competing and in any match there is fierce competition and it can be confusing. And the reason why you need an umpire in a cricket match is because you need a neutral party. Which is to ensure that the rules of the game are applied. They are not there to be on any side. Their role is to manage the game. It's not what the crowd says. It's not the crowd that says it's a four or a six. It is the umpire who makes that decision. It's not how loud the enemy is shouting. It is not how loud they are saying, How's it? The umpire is not faced by that. But in the absence of an umpire, it is what I play in Manchester called Bush Cricket. Yeah. That anything goes. In Bush Cricket, these matches, there's no rule. They are made up by the teams. Yeah. And so if I believe I hit a four, it is a four. Yes. The absence of men is like the absence of an umpire. Yes. When men are missing from the game, there's going to be chaos. When men is missing from the world, there's going to be chaos. Absence of men is bringing destruction, pain, and anguish. As I draw to a close, the devil is after men. Yes. The devil traps women, but he kills men. Yes. i say that again. The devil traps women, but he kills men. Yes. You know why? The men carry the zira or the sperma. Greek zira is Hebrew. What that means is the seed. They carry the seed. 
They carry the sperm. We embody men in Amen. There is an embodiment of creative power. We are born to create. But the seeds need nurturing. And therefore, if the enemy can kill a seed, he can kill a generation. If the enemy can kill a seed, one seed. If he can take out Durbandale and Taylor, he has taken out a whole nation. A lineage. And so the enemy traps women but kill men. And so therefore, we must declare war against the attack upon the male seed. Stop us out the man. Pray. Learn to pray. Learn to pray because you must understand that there's a war upon the male seed. When he gets a man, he gets both. Both. A man and a woman. Yes. 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 When the enemy gets a man, he gets both a man and a woman. Because you will be single, depressed, crying. All oh, women say, Oh, I don't need a man in my life. Make the man left. And if some of you are honest, right now you are miserable. 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 Or some of you are single and miserable. Miserable. Hello. That's why we need men in the church. And if they get some of you the enemy right now, have holding hostage. The men in your life. That's why you have to pray them on. Hello? You have to ensure that you intercede for them. Men are not the most. Men, sorry, are on the enemy's most wanted list. Yeah. Jesus himself had to be hidden. In Egypt, what they wanted? All the male children. This is from biblical time. The men is under attack. Why are we so important? Because we are God's strategy to rule earth. Yes. Miles Monroe said, he, his, the enemy is so afraid of men that he sends the women to church and keep the men at home. Right. Because if it is that a family raises up to include a man there is no telling what you can do in the camp of the enemy. In closing, it is important the identity of a kingdom man. Exodus 34 verse 23 said three times in the year, all of your men, children, must appear before the Lord thy God. For I will cast out the nation before thee. Now pause. God is saying three times a year, all of you must come up to me. It's like a men's convention. Yeah. Yes. Three times a year, men's God said, all the men yeah. must leave Israel and come up to me. Yeah. And he says, for what? I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. No, when men pray, yeah. God. mercy. Yeah. I wish I had time to break this up. When the group of men gather, Yes. And praise and see the face of God. He said, Hey, I will cast out the enemy before you and I will enlarge the place of the water. Yes. 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 He says, Neither shall any man desire your land when thou shalt go to appear before the Lord thy God three times a year. All the men should meet him. The Lord God says, Come up. Now understand that if the men are the fighters and the protectors, and all the men should leave the women and children and go to God. Who protects the woman? God is saying, men are so powerful when they come together that not even the enemy can attack the female in their, in their family again. if a man come before God. Again. Are you getting this? If a man can go before God, yes. the female in their life is protected. Yes. That's why a man must be a man. Yes. Benefit from it. 
understand that God is calling us up to give us instruction. He says, I have your back. Now men must stop avoiding and rejecting God. Because of that, there's a cultural crisis. Our problem today is not a political problem. It's not a crime problem. And understand me when I say this. It is the absence of men who listen to God. That will be the problem. Now understand that there's a difference. There are different stages and phases. There's malehood. Malehood means you just have a pipe. You just have a piece. There's boyhood, where you're dependent, you're immature, you're irresponsible, but then there comes manhood, where you must be mature, responsible, and take care of somebody else. Yes. Understanding men, kingdom men, that in closing you're expected to be the protector. A godly man will put himself between his family and all who will do harm. Strength is not the best indicator of a man being a good protector. It's, it's not badness we are talking about. You must be able to protect your family by praying. Yes. When demonic fights come up in the house, the man must be there to stand in the gap and pray. Yes. Secondly, you must be a provider. A godly man makes adequate preparation in advance for his family's needs. Being a good provider is not the same as being upper middle class. You can be in what they call lower class and be a good provider. You must be a prophet. A godly man speaks on the behalf of God to his family. So you must hear from God and speak to your family. And then you must be a priest, a godly man, speaks to God on the behalf of his family. So it's twofold. You must hear from God and speak to your family, a prophet. But you must also speak to God on the behalf of your family, a priest. Yeah. He prays with and for his family regularly. That's a kingdom. Men, you must be a reflection of God. God is looking for a man. He said in Exodus 22, I close with the same text from first service. That I saw for a man among them that should make up the edge, and I stand in it and stand in the gap before me, that I should not destroy it, and I found none. God is calling for a man, therefore. A kingdom man, there's a cry for a kingdom man on earth to rule in the perspective of heaven. God is looking for men. The country is on the trend. There's a child without a father. There's a single woman who can't find a man. Churches where women volunteer for everything and the men are missing. Our children are dying. We have a leadership crisis. Immorality is taking over. Moral decadence. But the harvest is ripe. Men are being called. Whom shall I send? I speak to the woman now. You too can go and disciple a man. It could be your husband that is on your uncle. The goal of a kingdom man is to be implemented here on earth, and that is for men to rule on earth. We're not just created to live normal life, we're created to have dominion. God has put us here, men. He don't want us to just be simply beings living from day to day and doing our own thing. A kingdom man understands that he is obligated to a higher calling. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there of the world and they that dwell therein. But he is saying that I still need a man to implement spiritual things in the earth realm. And to do that, you have to be hearing from me. Is there a man today that knows that I'm a kingdom man? Or you know that you're a man, but you're not operating on kingdom principles. We are going to pray for you. I invite you to stand all over this house. And stand in the gap for a man in your life. Stand in the gap for a man in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
wisdom of God to walk upon their policies. I pray in the name of Jesus that God like Peter they step out of the earth. Lord, in faith and confidence, knowing that they are God that is able to exceed in the abundance of the world called the deliverance project. Do it for the men on this father's day and come and be careful to give you the praise and the glory. And we say thanks in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. It is done. Every father that has tuned in and will tune in to our other services. It was a pleasure having you to share with us. Join us shortly for our tribute to the fathers. And this is our tribute to all the fathers worldwide as we stream live here from here, 48 April Road. It is entitled to that with love. And so receive what we will have to offer you. God bless you for those who have joined me on the live. God bless you. Join us back in 15 minutes.